الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين له النعمة وله الفضل وله الثناء الجميل صلوات الله البر الرحيم والملائكة المقربين على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فيا أيها الناس إني أوصيكم ونفسي أولا بتقوى الله والمواظبة على ذكر الله ألا خير الكلام كلام الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار من أطاع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعص الله ورسوله فقد خسر وغواه فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تبارك وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما we begin with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We acknowledge that our praise and thanks belong to Him alone. Therefore, we seek His guidance, we seek His assistance, we seek His forgiveness, we seek His love and His nearness. And we put our complete trust and reliance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. I bear witness that there's no being worthy of serving, worthy of observing, worthy of worshipping, except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger leading up to any major event a person who wants to be successful tries to figure out what are the objective what what are the objectives of that event how can they succeed take for example a person who is a student and the final exams are coming up if they want to be successful the student will go and look at the syllabus what are the required chapters for the final exam? What are, are the objectives? What are the requirements to pass? And once the student knows what is required, what are the objectives of that exam, he knows how to prepare and how to succeed. And this may be a, per, a, a project at work, a programmer. He, before he starts coding, he needs to know what the project manager wants what the customer wants, how, wh what do they want from that app, then they will go and they will start coding and designing. Similarly, we have a major event that is coming up. And we need to know what is the event, uh, what are the objectives, what are the requirements, what are, the, what, what are our objectives for this event. And what is this event that is coming up? It's the month of Ramadan. We are less than 40 days, uh, 45 days to the month of Ramadan. And this month of Ramadan, it comes every year. And there are a lot of opportunities and chances that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us during the month of Ramadan. We need to prepare ourselves before the month of Ramadan comes. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala require from us during the month of Ramadan? What are the objectives of the month of Ramadan? What are the special moments of the month of Ramadan? So that when this opportunity is given to me by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I can make the most out of it. And this upcoming Ramadan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to witness this month of Ramadan and many more to come, is unique in that we know how we spent our last two Ramadans. Two years ago, everything was closed and everything was virtual. Last year, some of it was open, some th there was still a lot of restrictions. We pray that this coming Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings everything back to normal. And the things that we missed, the taraweeh that we missed, the qiyam that we missed, the communal iftars that we missed, the things that we, that, that we missed in the last two years, these are things that we can plan for this next coming Ramadan to make the most out of it. Inshallah, I'd like to share 
the objectives of the month of Ramadan through the Quran. So we know what are our aims, what are our requirements and our objective to make the most out of the month of Ramadan. The first objective of the month of Ramadan is that it is a month of the Quran. It is the month for us to reconnect with the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes to us in the Quran what is the month of Ramadan. When we think of Ramadan, we think of a month of fasting. It is a month of fasting. But what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahu Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. The month of Ramadan is the month in which the Quran was revealed. And the Quran was revealed, we know that there were two revelations. There was the original revelation which was the Inzal. And then there was the gradual revelation which is the Tanzil. The Inzal is the revelation from the, pres from, from the preserved tablet. From Allah al-Mahfuz to the Sama al dunya And this took place in the month of Ramadan. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzallahu fi laylatul qadr That we reveal the Qur'an in the night of power. So this was the original uh, revelation. And then the gradual revelation, which started, to the Prophet, which started the Prophethood of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the cave of Al-Hira. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received the initial revelation, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, that this revelation started also in the month of Ramadan. And it went throughout the prophethood of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over the course of his 23 years. So the Qur'an was revealed in the month of Ramadan. The gradual revelation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started in the month of Ramadan. There is no surprise that the prophetic Ramadan was also circulated with Qur'an. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his Ramadan was, his Ramadan was around the Qur'an al-Kareem. Whether we look at the recitation of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during the month of Ramadan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited extra Qur'an. And on top of that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited Qur'an to Jibreel alayhi sallatu wa sallam every Ramadan. And in his final Ramadan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited it twice. And on top of that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited the Qur'an in what we know as the Taraweeh and the Qiyamul Layl. This was something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did in Ramadan. And we should also do that. We should increase our recitation of the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is something that we should plan from now. That how much can I read on a daily basis? And we should plan that every day I will read this much Qur'an. If we can read a whole juz, this is something that we should plan to do. If we can read less, this is something that we should do. But we should be consistent in our recitation. Every single day, we should recite some portion of the Qur'an. Some of the scholars of the Qur'an, they explain that if we look at this verse of Shahr Ramadan al-Ladhi unzila fi al-Qur'an, this verse is found in Surah Al-Baqarah. And Surah Al-Baqarah, as we know, is a Madani Surah. The uh, Madani Surah are those Surahs which were revealed after the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So 13 years of revelation and prophethood already passed in Makkah to Mukarramah. Once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated, then later on in his, in his era in Madinah to Muramwara, this is when Surah Baqarah was revealed. Everyone knew how revelation started. The Sahaba knew that the Qur'an was, the revelation started to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Makkah Al-Mukarramah in the month of Ramadan. But Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala in Madinah Al-Munawwara is revealing the verse, Shahr Ramadan Al-Ladhi Unzila Fi Al-Quran. Well, there's one note that the scholars explain is that why did Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala tell us in Madinah Al-Munawwara later on that the Qur'an was revealed in the month of Ramadan? It is that we need to reintroduce ourselves to the Qur'an in the month of Ramadan. Last time 
We read this much Quran in the month of Ramadan. Let us increase more. If there is some aspect of our Quran that is lacking, let us try to get that in this month of Ramadan. Maybe our recitation needs to be worked on. Let us try to we'll do that during the month of Ramadan. Maybe if we need to practice our tajweed, let us try to start that during the month of Ramadan. We should, if we want to now understand the meaning of the Quran, let us try to start that in the month of Ramadan. Let us reintroduce or introduce ourselves to those parts of the Quran that we need to that, 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 that we need to work on and gradually increase every Ramadan from there. So this is the first objective of the month of Ramadan is the Quran and everything to do with it. The recital of the Quran, the study of the Quran, the listening of the Quran, all of these are things that we need to do in the month of Ramadan. The next objective of the month of Ramadan as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells in the Quran is to nurture to nurture mindfulness to nurture taqwa consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in surah al-baqarah kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that fasting has been ordained upon you just as it was ordained upon those before you لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may become mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that, you be, so that you can become conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the inherent qualities of siyam, of fasting, is the ability to abstain from sin. And this is the desired outcome of taqwa. If we are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we are fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do and we'll stay away from the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us how to nurture this taqwa. That we need to suppress our desires. For more than half the day, we are controlling our, our, our natural, our, our, our nature our desire to eat and drink. We are suppressing that. And in doing so, we are, we, we, we are controlling our desires. And when we control our desires, we are, we, it helps us become mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That I am doing this only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this Ramadan, it gives us that push that this is what our life needs to be. That we need to suppress our desires to earn the mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Ramadan, the desires that we are suppressing are, is eating and drinking. But other desires as well, whether it, whatever type of, of desires there are, we need to try to use them in a correct manner. It, w those that need to be controlled, to control them, to attain the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something... The purpose of our life is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The means of, pleasing, uh, 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 of, of being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taqwa. And how the, the practical method of that is to suppress our desires. So this is what we get through fasting. And this is something that we find a beautiful example that in the life of the Sahaba Ridwanullah Ajma'in, they had this quality of taqwa. They had this consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if the consciousness went down a little bit, they felt that they are doing something wrong. We know the story of Hanzala radiallahu anhu that he came out of his house one day saying that I have become a, uh, that Hanzala has become a munafiq. When he was asked that, why are you saying this? He says that when we are in the gatherings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our mindful of Allah subhanahu wa our mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at a high. But when we go home and we, 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 we engage and talk to our family members and we are, our mindfulness goes down. This is taqwa. This is the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is desired in our lives. And Ramadan gives us that push. That one of the ways of attaining taqwa is to control our desires. And we learn that through fasting. The next objective of the month of Ramadan is to 
become grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So that you may become grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that you may become those who express their gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that gratitude is a very important quality that we need to bring into our lives. We find in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam early on in prophethood was offered riches. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was offered mountains of gold. But he declined them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave him the option of being a prophet that is a king or a prophet that is of, of lower means, of someone who is not rich. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we know opted for the humble prophet, right? And one of the reasons that the Prophet sallallahu gave as to why he opted to be a prophet of humble means is so that one day when he has when, when he has food, when he has luxuries, he can express gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the days wherein he doesn't have anything, he can exercise patience. So the Prophet sallallahu gave up all the riches that were offered from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that he can be grateful, so that he can express gratitude and sabr. So we know that gratitude is a very important aspect. And the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we fast for the entire day, when we hold ourselves back from eating and, 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 and drinking, and at the time of iftar, when we open our, 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 our fast with the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us, this is a time that we appreciate the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that we, this appreciation, this shukr, this gratitude is something that we need to that we need to express in all avenues of our life. The faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. The life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Everything, the health, the wealth, the family, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us, we need to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Prophet ﷺ, inwardly, outwardly, he was an example of how to express gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inwardly, when, when the Prophet ﷺ would always, in his du'as and in his adhkaw, would always express his gratitude and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Outwardly, the Prophet ﷺ would utilize everything that he was blessed with for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All his time, he he utilized it in the teaching of, of Islam and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The wealth, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would always give. Whatever he had, he would give to those in need. This is the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that we have. That we need to inwardly and outwardly express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inwardly, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us something, we have this sense of shukr. That... Our love, our sustainer, the only one who can support us, he has supported us. We need to, we, 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 there's a sense of appreciation in our heart. And outwardly, some of the, the blessings that we have, let us use that in, the, in, in, in those avenues that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The health that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with, let us use that, let us, let us use this health to, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The time that he has given us, let us use this time for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ibadah, in worship, in da'wah, in learning and teaching, whatever we can do, let us utilize this time. The money that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, let us, let us express our, grad, uh, our appreciation and our gratitude by spending them in those avenues that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in doing so, it is only our benefit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need any of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La in shakartum la azidanakum. If you express gratitude to me, I will increase for you. If we are we are we, we sacrifice our time, our wealth for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is for our benefit. We get our reward in the hereafter, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases that blessing in this dunya for us. The next objective for the month of, of, of Ramadan 
is to glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wari to Allah ala mahadakum. Is that we can glorify and magnify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is meant by this is that we need to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the central purpose of our life. Everything that we do is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we think about this when it comes to fasting. Different ibadat. When it comes to praying, people can see us. We are, we are physically in the majlis of our home. When you're praying, this is something that people can see. When we give charity, someone knows that we are giving charity. Whatever we are doing, the different ibadat, people can see that. But when it comes to fasting, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. We can tell somebody that we're fasting, but only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our, our intention. That if we made the niyyah, if we're really abstaining from whatever we should be abstaining from, this is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the month of Ramadan, when we fast, and we do this ibadah that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we are doing, this is an example of how we should be living our life. That everything that we do is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُ So that we can glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the, 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 the central focus of everything and anything. And the final objective of the month of Ramadan is to realize our closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That our Rabb, our Creator, our Sustainer, He is in reach. And what is that reach? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيمٌ In the middle of the verses of Ramadan and fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيمٌ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if any of my servants ask you about me, then I am close. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ Then I respond to the supplication of anyone who supplicates to me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the month of Ramadan, He wants us to reach out to Him. He wants us to supplicate Him. He wants us to, 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 to ask Him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us this. And there are times in the month of Ramadan when we know that the du'as are accepted. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there are three du'as that are always accepted. There are three du'as that are not rejected. And one of them the Prophet sallallahu said, the du'a of the fasting person when he breaks his fast. So there are these golden opportunities in the month of Ramadan that we can use to reach out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it is in the qiyam, after qiyam, in the time of tahajjud, whether it is a time of breaking our fast, or any other time during the month of Ramadan, when the doors of the heavens are open and the, and, and the doors of the hellfire are closed, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pouring His mercy upon us. At this time, during the month of Ramadan, let us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is closed. He says, that I respond to the supplication of everyone who supplicates to me. So let us look, let, let us know what the objectives are for the month of Ramadan. That we should come closer. That we should uh, build a bond with the Quran. That we should nurture mindfulness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That we should be grateful to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That we magnify Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and we realize our closeness to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us, to, allow us to prepare in a proper manner for the month of Ramadan. That He allow us to witness the month of Ramadan and make the most out of it. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. In alhamdulillahi na'hmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa numinu bihi wa natawakkaru alayhi. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق مشير ونذيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات 
والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وأزواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأزدقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسر رسوله اللهم في العباس ولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذوهم ورضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحب أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فيبوض أبغضهم وخير أمة قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وإنهاء الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله العلي العظيم يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأعظم وأكبر Allah Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'bud Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqim Al-Sirat Al-Lazeen An'amta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى ولا الآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمدا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل يا أيها الكافرون لا أعبد ما تعبدون ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد ولا أنا عابد ما عبدتم ولا أنتم عابدون ما أعبد لكم دينكم ولي دين الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسفون وسلام على المسلم وحمد لله رب العالمين Thank you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the khutbah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from Sheikh Ahmed al-Marji. That's a good reminder for the month of Ramadan. And uh, we will be inshallah welcoming you. Uh, please follow the parking guidelines. Again, our neighbors are not happy. So please avoid parking on the flower shop plaza, which is in front of us. And also a rehab center, which is on the back of this building. And uh, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, IA Torrance. If you will find the khutbahs available over there for you to later on, you can listen to them. And also you can uh, get uh, live um, khutbah available at the Facebook uh, page at, at also. Zakallah. <laughs>